and welcome back to this week's segment of my testimony. Um, for this one, I thought about doing something that's more attributed to everybody. So, for Christians, like, we think about all the things that we believe in, like the core testaments of the Bible, like Jesus dying for us, his unending grace, his compassion, his love, how we're sons and daughters in Christ, we're kings and queens, just, and sometimes it can feel kind of like this impossible thing that we just don't see every day, but that's, I guess, the point of faith. So, for my testimony, I'm going to talk about a doubt that I kind of struggle with, and me and God are still working through it, but it's something that we can all reflect and think about what are some of the core tenets of the Bible that you just have a hard time believing in. So for me, it kind of started when I first got into the Coast Guard. So I went to prep school. Um, it was an extra year, so I did what I call the five-year plan. And my first couple months in, a uh, dear close friend of me, uh, Tyler Chirpin, committed suicide when I was still three months in the Coast Guard. And it was honestly my first experience with death, which I was really lucky. I didn't, I hadn't lost my grandparents yet, but my parents were still alive, extended family. So it was the first time I went to a funeral. It was the first time I saw a dead body. And it, it, it kind of hits you, especially since it was so late in life. So it's like, I matured and I think as a kid, when you experience death, you can kind of process it a little bit better. And so it kind of like, it created this waterfall effect where it did, it brought me closer to God. I was praying a lot more, I was reading the Bible, but it also created this seed of doubt. It's like, what if heaven doesn't exist or what actually happened after you die? So I get to the academy and then I get into OCF and I start to talk to people about it and it got a lot better, but then I started getting these random panic attacks where it just gripped me in the middle of the night when I couldn't fall asleep or I'd get these really vivid nightmares that were very violent. But then I would also get like these counter thoughts too, just like, what do I have a right to be sad? It's like, he wasn't my brother, he wasn't my son or daughter. And I started experiencing more suicides. Um, another close friend of mine committed suicide Last year, a close friend from back home attempted suicide twice, and even my sister, she told me like a couple years ago, she attempted suicide too, and I just never knew about it. And you think about all this, and you kind of have to think about how it applies to yourself. What's going to happen when I die? Because that's something that we don't think about. Because, especially as Christians, like, oh, I'm going to go to heaven, I'm going to go with Jesus. And yes, that is true. But for some reason, I can't get it through my head that heaven is real. So, what do you do? Well, for me, I didn't want to try medication. I had seen its effects, and it kind of led to one of my friends I talked about attempting suicide. And I didn't want to even go there. So... I went to the one guy who proved to solve all my problems. And that's God. So I started journaling, and this is honestly like, I have dozens of journals that I just filled up with my letters to God. And I started like actually reading the Bible, exclusively like reading parts that said, do not be afraid for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. And put your sorrows on the Lord, and like Ecclesiastes is a good book because it talks about mourning. And it was attributing to me that what I'm doing wasn't bad. I just needed to give it back to God. And it's kind of hard to talk to other people about it because like, it's kind of a downer. No one really wants to talk about death all the time or it's like going, doubting one of the core principles of the Bible. Like, of course heaven is real, but sometimes you need to because just hearing it from another human being is like so, so gratifying. So, yes, 
even good practicing Christians doubt the Lord. And doubting is not bad. He wants us to ask questions. He wants us to engage in that conversation with him. But the point is that you don't turn away from your doubt. You don't fall into these pits of despair because you crawl back out. Jesus always is reaching out his hand to you and you just gotta pull. You gotta accept it. You can't just wallow in your stuff so believe me. Believe me, there's many times where I just wanted to stay there in my pit of depression and just like lay in bed all day. But the joy that you feel when you're around your friends and family and seeing that that happiness that God gives you through that, it just gave me more motivation of me not wanting to be there. Not wanting to stay there. And I'm, me and God are slowly working through it. I still get the small panic attacks every now and then, but it's gotten a lot better. So I think the first step for people that are like struggling with those tenets of grace and love and that these things that seem impossible, just remember that God is the conqueror of all impossible. He raised his son from the dead for Pete's sakes. His miracles throughout the Bible were just littered in every book. Even in numbers, yeah. <laughs> the ones that just talk about genealogy. They're there. And just remembering that he's all powerful, all knowing, and all loving. You can't put him in a box with your doubt. You just have to work through and accepting the fact that he can conquer all, even conquering sin, death, and the devil. So that's just my testimony today. Thanks for listening. And Sean Edchill is looking for more people to do these eight snap videos. So shout out if you want to do eight snap or my testimony. It really is a good chance to experience what you have and your testimony and what you've learned through your life and just getting other people. So thanks. Thank you.